Over the past 50 years, hip hop has taken many forms, evolving and growing into different styles and sounds. But everybody has their favorite incarnation of the sound. When people talk about quote unquote real hip hop, what is it that you think of? What is the purest form of the genre to you? For me, I always think of the late 90s and early 2000s underground scene. The seasoned evolution of boom bap before it was considered old school, with lively and socially conscious lyricism from a crop of the greatest MCs to ever rock the mic. During that era, Raucous Records put together one of the most incredible runs in music history, giving us some of the greatest hip hop ever recorded. Raucous remains one of the most important labels in hip hop, even though they have been defunct longer than they were ever even in business. Starting as a small indie label and growing to become one of the most important labels in the genre, housing some of the best rap artists of all time, including Most Def, Talib Kweli, Pharoah Manch, Big L, and many more. In the mid-90s, as mainstream hip-hop started to veer more into the territory of shiny suits and champagne, a small record label named Nervous Records struck gold with the releases of Black Moon's Enter the Stage and Smith & Wesson's De Shining. These releases were instant classics and stayed true to hip-hop's roots as an art form from the streets of New York. In 1995, 22-year-old entrepreneurs Jarrett Meyer and Brian Brader created a record label of their own to try and capture some of that same magic from the bootcamp click. The duo were high school friends with James Murdoch, the son of Rupert Murdoch, who was one of the richest and most powerful businessmen in the country. James helped finance and own the label, which was originally named Raw Records, quickly evolving into Raucous Records, and the duo didn't know it at the time, but they were on the verge of creating history. In the label's first couple of years, they released singles from a little bit of everything, from rock, to drum and bass, to electronic, and some hip-hop. But their first big release came in 1997 with Fun Crusher Plus by Company Flow, a trio from Brooklyn featuring Big Just, Mr. Len, and a young LP. Company Flow already had a small but passionate following after the release of their debut EP, which helped bring some fresh ears to the new label. Fun Crusher Plus marked the first of many classic albums from Raucous. It was raw and abstract, and unlike anything else out at the time. Later that year, the label released their first compilation album, Sound Bombing. This album is a legendary and scene-defining project, launching the careers of Most Def and Talib Kweli, who became two of the most important figures in underground hip-hop. Hosted by DJ Evil D of The Beat Miners, this project is built like a mixtape, sticking to the label's underground roots, and strengthening the reputation amongst hip-hop heads everywhere. The album is subtitled, The Ultimate Guide to Underground Hip-Hop, and that's exactly what it was, almost like a tour into this upcoming sound and exciting world. The following year they released their second compilation album, Lyricist Lounge Volume 1. This album was based on the Lyricist Lounge showcases in New York, where young MCs would go to prove themselves on the big stage. This project exemplifies everything that Raucous was doing right at the time. It was a real scene in New York that they were shining the lights on, helping to bring this sound to a wider audience. This is a double album, with the first disc being hosted by De La Soul and the second disc hosted by Cool Keith, two acts that have been holding the underground down since the late 80s, making them the perfect artists to introduce this immaculate crop of underground icons, both new and old. Some of the many features on here includes Q-Tip, OC, Razkaz, Black Thought, Common, Pharoah Manch, KRS-One, Punchline, Wordsworth, and many more. By this point, Raucous was on a roll and they were just getting started. Most Def and Talib Kweli released their debut collaborative album as Black Star in 1998, quickly becoming not only the faces of Raucous Records, but also two of the faces of this emerging underground hip hop scene that was taking the culture by storm. This Black Star project is a classic that has only become more revered over the years, and it was a big hit for Raucous too, selling 27,000 units in the first week, which led to Raucous getting a distribution deal with Priority Records. 1999 was the biggest year that Raucous ever had, releasing a handful of dope projects, but most notably Internal Affairs by Pharoah Manch and Black on Both Sides by Most Def. Both of these albums are certified classics, often getting mentioned as two of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time. This era of Raucous was so magical, they somehow had the most talented musicians in hip-hop history all in their prime, and the execs at Raucous were smart enough to let these musicians cook. All of these early albums feel true to the artists, there was never any attempt to water down their sounds for more radio play. And what they were doing worked. Black on Both Sides was certified gold, 
and Farrell Manches, Simon Says, was getting licensed to be in big budget films like Charlie's Angels, which was pretty unheard of for an independent label at the time. Also in 1999, they released Company Flow's instrumental project called Little Johnny from the Hospital, DJ Spinner's Heavy Beats Volume 1, High and Mighty's underrated Home Field Advantage, as well as the label's most notable compilation to date, Sound Bombing 2. This project reached outside of Raucous' roster to help give us an album of the realest hip-hop that you'll ever hear. This tape featured music from Common, R.A. the Rugged Man, Sadat X, Grand Poobah, Dilated Peoples, and even a young Eminem. The label's success continued into the new millennium, as they released Big L's posthumous opus The Big Picture, as well as Talib Kweli and high-tech collaboration as Reflection Eternal, called Train of Thought. This album, along with all of Talib's early raucous work, became staples of conscious rap at the time, and the label embraced this social responsibility. They released Hip Hop for Respect in 2000, an EP organized by Talib and Most Def, to speak out against police brutality in general, and the case of Amadou Diallo in particular. Amadou Diallo had been shot and killed by the New York City Police Department the previous year when he attempted to retrieve his wallet, and the police fired 41 shots at the unarmed man. The project assembled 41 MCs to represent the 41 shots, bringing hip-hop together as a whole, bringing a unifying message to the culture. Over the next several years, Raucous continued their output of dope hip-hop, with another Lyricist Lounge project, a third and final sound bombing, two more Talib albums, enlisting veterans like Cool G Rap to hop on the Raucous train, as well as a variety of new talent. But throughout all of this great hip-hop on the musical front, the business end of the label was a different story, going through a variety of changes over the years. In 2002, Raucous signed a joint venture deal with MCA. Soon after, MCA folded and Interscope and Geffen bought Raucous. After the sale of its catalog in 2004, Raucous split from Geffen. At this point, the label had lost most of the talent that made the Raucous Records brand. They tried to make a comeback in 2006 when they signed with Red, a Sony music distribution company and planned to have a new lineup of hip-hop artists, along with a management company called Raucous Management, as well as a film division, with plans to release a movie starring Rosario Dawson called Exite Loves Vida, but it seems like nothing ever came of this. In early 2007, Raucous Records made one last push as a label, accepting album submissions from hip-hop artists, known or unknown, to be considered for their new marketing campaign called The Raucous 50. The campaign saw the release of 50 digital hip-hop albums that were all made available on November 27th of 2007. The 50 artists chosen to wear the Raucous 50 badge were signed to a digital distribution deal and had their 50 albums released under the banner Raucous 50 Presents. This campaign, while creative and an interesting idea, did not pop off like they hoped. And now looking back at the 50 releases, there are only two or three artists here that I even recognize the name of at this point so they weren't quite able to spot the next generation of underground hip-hop like they did once before. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and with many things, it does seem like money was the cause of the derailment of Raucous Records. DJ Evil D, who was there from the start with Raucous, had this to say about the label's downfall in an interview with Ambrosia for Heads. He said, What happened was, they got blinded by the money coming in. All the big music executives had houses in the Hamptons, so Raucous went and got a house in the Hamptons. I remember when I got my beat miners deal with them. They wanted to give me a Raucous chain, a platinum chain with diamonds on it. I told them, look, if you give me that chain, I'ma take pictures with y'all up here. We gonna ha 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 and he he he. As soon as I walk out of here, I'm gonna pawn it and go buy records. So I don't think you should do this. If you wanna give me something, give me money to buy studio equipment. But the Raucous dudes, success derailed them. If they would have stayed with what they did, Raucous would still be here, like Duckdown is still here. It's been about 15 years since Raucous Records was in effect, and almost 20 years since they were at the top of the game, but what it represents still lives on. The underground scene that they helped create is now thriving more than ever, with labels like Griselda and Bruiser Brigade are carrying the torch for the underground into the 2020s. Thanks for watching everybody. Let me know down in the comments what is your favorite Raucous Records album. If you ever want to talk hip-hop at all, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm always posting updates about my videos and what I've been listening to lately. I want to thank you all for rocking with me so much. My channel's been getting a lot of love and I am so thankful. As always, I got a lot more headed your way. 
So if you like the video and want to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, that is always appreciated. Thanks for watching.